Hello and welcome to Archetype, everybody. My name is Josh Sherman. I don't know if I said that right, but welcome to Archetype. <laughs> uh, welcome to uh, episode three. Today we're going to be working on uh, the creator, the artist, the character we've been working on for uh, previous sessions of this stream. So we're going to continue doing that. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit more of my process uh, of how I work, what I like to do. And today we're going to spend a little bit of time focusing on improving our workflows and just generally making things a little bit better. Uh, as always, if there's anything, issues with the stream as I'm working, if there's issues with the sound, the music being too loud, laggy, anything like that, let me know and I'll try to fix it as fast as I can. Uh, but it is streaming and sometimes things happen. Um, so, first to jump into it, we're just going to get straight into it because we only have about two hours. Um, last time I ended, I'll show you where we ended, and I had said that I was going to try to finish the model. Uh, however, it was Thanksgiving week and weekend, and I decided to do a little bit of self-care and just kind of relax and not actually work on it. So I haven't actually touched the model at all. So what you'll get to see today is more modeling and more texturing, and we'll get into some of that today. But I want to focus more on the workflow and the tools and things that I need to do to make that better. Right, and so we're going to jump into that, specifically some ZBrush stuff. So we'll get into that very, very shortly. All right, so first I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen. So over here, you're going to see my Trello board. In case you don't know what Trello it is, is essentially it's, it is essentially something where you're doing um, organization for your for yourself, right? You're you're organizing your your thoughts and your places, and it's just a, a really great way to focus on organizing in general. And so this is a really great tool for this. And basically, what it works like is a lot of sticky notes on a board. Right, so I can click here, and I can add anything I want, and I can say, um, right now we're working on the creator, so I could say the creator. Right, click this, and I can move it around, and I can move it from phase to phase. And the goal of this stream, the goal of the archetype stream that we're actually working on, is to take this character, so this is the artist and the creator, you'll see some things that I've written here, and I'll talk about these if that's interesting to you. Uh, I did this in the first stream as well. And we'll move them down this pipeline from the inspiration and sketches to sculpting and modeling to UV texturing, uh, lighting and composition, and rendering and presentation, all the way to a completed piece. Uh, Trello has some fun little things. So as they age out, meaning if I haven't touched a card for a while, uh, it eventually turns into a pirate map and it starts to fade, which is kind of fun. So you can have some little fun things with it. And right now we're still in the sculpting and modeling phase. I was hoping to be done with the model and be here. But we'll have, we have uh, three more streams, including this one, before the end of the year. So I'm going to finish probably this one, and then we'll, we'll do this one next time. And then this will kind of be a combination one where we're lighting and compositing and, and just generally focusing on our presentation. So that's our goal. Now, I'm going to go ahead and jump quickly into the model. This is where we were last time. And I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to change uh, what we're doing here so it's a little bit bigger. Uh, again, my name is Josh Herman, the Chief Creative Officer here at Nomen. So you probably don't need to see what this thing is down at the bottom. And I'll move that out of the way. And we'll make this a little bit larger for y'all. Cool. Now, this is the model that we had been working on. And this is the creator here. So the object that we're kind of looking at is this character, this creature. That's kind of overlooking this other one in the middle of, of putting it together. If you're interested in watching how this part, or I got to this part, uh, you're more than welcome to go to one of the previous streams and check it out. This is kind of where we're at. Now, what I'm at now, or the point where I'm at now, what I was planning to do, but what we'll end up doing today, is uh, focusing on the next parts of our workflow. How do we speed up our workflow? How do we make it more exciting? How do we make it more accessible? Just generally, how do we go faster? Right? How do we go faster and how do we improve what we're doing? So the process that I'm going to be using is something that uh, I have seen uh, Marco and Cedric from Chaos Masons use. Uh, they actually were on our stream probably six months ago, I think back in July or June. And uh, they have a really fantastic way of doing hard surface stuff and just doing interesting workflows in that way. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically take a lot of these individual pieces. I have two of these meshes here on the right, so you'll see that I'll be able to jump between them. This is the one with more detail, which is what we eventually want to get to. And then this is one that's more cleaned up. We're going to take this mesh here and we're start cleaning it up and breaking it up to several different chunks and several different sub tools. Right now it's all one big mesh. So everything all the way, even including 
the bottom of this base here is all one subtool that I think I sculpted out of a sphere. I think it was, I'm going to say it was a sphere. Okay. So now we're going to break it up and we're going to add detail because at this point we're at 10 million polygons for this piece. The music is a bit high. Got it. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Turn it down just a tip. It's all one piece and this is right now is 10 million polygons and so if I'm going to sit here and try to sculpt something in this you'll notice that it quickly is faceted and there's no way I'm going to get enough detail for this thing right it's just not possible so we effectively to get the detail that we want we have to break it up so that's what we're going to do today now the first thing we're going to do to do that is we're actually going to make some new menus so we're going to make a new uh, pop-up palette meaning we're going to set a hotkey and we're going to make a palette that can pop up anywhere because a lot of the features that we're going to want to use are going to be amongst all different types of areas right within this so we're going to be able to want to be into our geometry palette we're going to be in our, our uh, masking palette we're going to want to be in all these different palettes accessing different features of ZBrush but it takes so much longer to go in and click them all right or to set hotkeys to all of them that gets very confusing or, or sets up a uh, you have to have remember a lot and it can be difficult so what we're going to do is we're just going to make a custom palette now the way you do that is you can you can set a hotkey to any of these palettes meaning i can set a hotkey right now if i hold control and alt you'll see in the top left of the screen very very top left you'll see that white text appear that's basically asking me to set a hotkey uh, and that's great but we and you know and then i can make that appear so we'll we'll say control alt and i'm gonna hit t I don't know if T was a thing, but we're going to overwrite it. Now if I hit T anywhere, the tool menu appears here, which is awesome, and I can open this up. I don't actually want this to happen because I don't want the tool one to use, but we'll use T as our upcoming hotkey. Now that means that I, I can do this with any of these palettes up here. So you see that tool is also right here. So it means I can set a hotkey for one of these but I don't have one of these right now that's gonna have all my things, so we need to make a new one. So I'm gonna go into Preferences, I'm gonna go into uh, Config, I'm gonna enable Customize, and then I'm gonna scroll down to Custom UI, and I'm gonna create a new custom menu. We'll call this our Hard Surface Tools. Cool, you'll see that now it's got one right here, Hard Surface Tools, if I click it, it flips it and makes it into the uh, alphabetical order here and now I have it. I'm going to actually pop this over here, make this dynamics one go away. We're going to grab a hard surface one, which has nothing inside of it, and we're going to put it here. Now to add stuff to this, I'm going to have to go back into my preferences and I'm going to have to get this custom sub palette inside here. Now the cool thing about this uh, is when you have enable customize on right here under uh, this, you can drag and drop anything. Now, what I mean by anything is like anything that's on your surface, you can drag and drop this. I think I showed this in a previous stream, but it's really cool because you can put anything you want in your workflow. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm already I'm gonna go ahead and go back into preferences, go into my custom UI, and I'm gonna grab this custom sub palette, and it is now here. Now I can start populating this with different items, and I'll eventually be able to set this up to be our hotkey, which I can actually do now. So control alt, hard surface tools. Oh, looks like I actually have to turn this off because it's probably still thinking I want to rename it. I don't want to rename it. We'll quickly just go preferences, config, enable customize, control alt, hit T. It's going to overwrite that. So before we were using T as our hotkey for our tools. Now T is our hotkey for our hard surface tools. And we'll be able to populate this with whatever we want it to be. I'm going to leave it over here for now. I'm going to reopen up that enable customize so we can drag and drop the item inside of it. And then I'm also going to go under here and I'm just going to adjust a couple quick things. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is I want to go into our interface and just kind of look at all of this. You can look at all these sub uh, Somebody's saying the music is still a little loud. Thank you very much. I'll continue turning it down. Hopefully that's a little bit better. So we're going to go in here and let's uh, go back into our preferences and palettes. One that I like to turn off, which is on by default, is our one sub palette uh, thing here. 
if I turn this off, what this does basically is I can open multiple palettes. Uh, by default, you will only be able to open one and it will automatically collapse them for you. Meaning like if I opened up Subtool and I went to Geometry, they would both, or only one could be open. This means that you can open them all at once. So I like to turn that off, especially when we're gonna be digging through all these menus. So things I know that I'm going to want off the top. First, I'm going to know, or I know, and I can also remove some of this stuff. Like I know I don't want my light box. I can free up some space here. Uh, I do know that I'm going to want deformation mirror. Mirror should be in there. Then we're also going to come in here. We're going to our geometry mirror and weld. I'm going to put both of those in there. And this is going to make it so that I can quickly access this stuff flip and model back and forth and I can also mirror it back to the other side right this is great stuff for us to have we're also going to go into our edge loop panel this is something we'll be ending uh, be using quite a bit today so we'll probably use panel loops or group loops uh, these are both pretty good I kind of prefer them both but I prefer panel loops so we'll start adding panel loops to this and you can just start shifting it around now as I'm playing with this I can hit T at any time and this is what it will actually appear like when we start uh, using this. So right now, uh, I'm going to basically build this as we go and using the features that we need as we go. So I know I probably want, you know, the amount of loops. We can put that over here. I can probably put, uh, if we want double on, I can probably take that off, put it over here. And effectively, we're just duplicating what we have. But it's a nice way to do that. Now, you can also come in here into the interface in the custom UI and you can create these. These are basically empty buckets that you can use as a separator, meaning like if I want to create a separation between some of my things, I can do that, which is kind of a nice way to just organize it a little bit more uh, visually. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to look at a long list, you can say, you know, here's all of my mirroring weld features. Here's all my panel loop features. Here's all my other features in there, too. So we'll get all this stuff quickly put in here. I'm not going to adjust too much of this. If I need to, I can come in here and do this. Um, I don't need dynamic subdiv. I don't need any of this stuff. I do want Z remesh, so I'm going to put Z remesh in here. And I'm also going to just duplicate this and put another one in. We'll start getting our Z remesh. Um, I'm going to get the target polygon count. I'm going to do keep groups. I'm going to have that option over here. These are some things that I know that we'll need. That's probably fine. Modify topology. We've already got our mirror and weld. I'm going to keep our uh, delete hidden here. I'm going to put that back up here. I use this one quite a bit. Just kind of quickly skimming through all of these to make sure that there's nothing that I'm missing. And I think we're good there. We'll start with this. I do know that under masking, masking, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab my mask by cavity. Um, let's see. I'm going to grab my mask by cavity. I'm going to toss that over here. After I get a new separator. This will create a masking group down here. Get all this set up. Let's see, mask by peaks and valleys, mask by color. We don't really use that one too much. Mask by feature. We might be end up using this later, but we'll probably hold it for now. I do know I, I want a mask by feature border on though. So let's grab that. And even though this seems like it's kind of boring, it takes a little, little bit of time. Uh, it's actually incredibly helpful because all you're gonna have to do once you've got this set up is you just do it once and then you're done. Then we'll save it. Don't need any of this. Uh, I might turn on my polish slider over here. Just a general polish. And that's probably going to be fine for now. 
So now I can actually uh, turn this off, meaning turn off Enable Customize. I'm going to store config after I hide this palette. That effectively saves everything we just did. So all the work that we just did in those first 15 minutes is now saved. And now if I hit T, we have all of those features here. I could obviously title this. Maybe that's something we'll do in the future. But I'm also going to keep this over here so that if we want to come back and we want to add anything to it, it's really simple, right? All we have to do is turn on Enable Customize and very quickly pop that over. And you know what? As I say that, let's just try this. I don't know if you can do this, but let's see. Enable Customize. Can I put Enable Customize in here? Ooh, look at that. That might make it even faster for when we have something to put in here. It's a very meta positioning of that, but I'm into it. What that basically means is I can now come in here, hit T, and hit Enable Customize. I could quickly grab something, put it over in there, and then we can pop it out of the way. And then I can also turn it off. And again, preferences, store config. So it doesn't take very long. Hotkeys, uh, setting up your own custom workflows, I think personally is a very, very important part of creating your own workflow. And you know, after you spend a lot of time working on a character, working in ZBrush, working in different uh, softwares, understanding and really knowing what you're what you're doing is super important. Uh, Mohammed says it's like a backpack. Exactly. You know, you pack up your backpack, you get everything that's it's yours, right? Um, and once you get going, it's kind of a, a good way to to really to really seriously speed up your workflow because now all you have to do is hit T. You'll have everything you have here. These nice little separators are keeping things visually grouped out for me, right? And I know kind of what I need. And I can always add to it and I can remove from it. Uh, I can make more of these. So I could have one that's T, that's all my hard surface tools, one that's all my painting tools, one that's all my sculpting tools. You can do that as whatever way you want. Another thing you can do, and we'll just do this very fast in case people don't know, uh, you can also customize your workspace. So preferences, uh, interface, for example, uh, sorry, I want to do eye colors. This is your interface colors. So if I wanted to change any of these, I can come in here and I can say my interface colors. Uh, it's probably this one. Yep. You see, as I hover over this, we'll make these all yellow today. We'll make them kind of mustardy. So today we'll be doing this color. And now we have all these buttons that are now this color. This is another way that you can come in here and you can save them. You can also store your config. So I personally highly, highly recommend customizing your space, customizing it to something that you like. It also makes it, depending on what you choose, certain colors can pop out. You can turn certain buttons to different colors. Good idea to do. Okay. All right. Enough jibber jabbering about doing all this kind of, you know, setup and all that fun stuff. To Let's get into the actual model. So uh, for those of you who are not uh, or haven't seen the previous streams, uh, we're, this is archetype. Uh, there are 12 archetypes that Carl Jung created uh, that we'll go through. Let me just pop those up real quick in our Trello board. These are the 12 archetypes here. So you're going to have right now the innocent sage, explorer, outlaw, magician, hero, lover, jester, everyman. Caregiver, ruler, an artist, and this inner ring is what they seek, and this is kind of the marks and, and what they they search for. Uh, we're working on the artist, sometimes known as the creator, and so our character is searching and innovation, and they like to provide structure. So I'm going to bring this back up and show you very quickly what we're working on. Uh, we're working on basically a robotic so sort of Art, artistic creator that creates beings and is a very perfectionist person. So starting with this, this is how we got to here. Solo mode is on. Apparently I've, there we go. Now I have two of these meshes. I'll show quickly highlight all these meshes for you on the right. Uh, if you, I like to use solo mode, which I have a hotkey for, which is right here. And if you use the arrow keys, you can go up and down in your, your subtool list. So you'll see I have this mesh here, which is starting to be cleaned up. This is the one we're going to spend a lot of time on today. We'll probably end up duplicating this several times. I'm going to hit down. This is the main mesh that has all of our subdivision levels. Then we have some arms, 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 and then the character that's being held. And then the basically the base here, one of the pieces of the base, another piece of the base. 
And our main goal for today is to get this big piece here broken into lots and lots of different subtools and starting adding detail. That's kind of how we're going to do that. If there's any questions as I'm working, please feel free to ask. Uh, happy to answer questions best that I can. Uh, but otherwise, we're just going to go ahead and get into it. All right. So this is the one that we've already cleaned up or started to clean up. And we're going to effectively try to break this into smaller pieces. Smaller pieces that are a little bit cleaner. Right? So I'm going to mask this. I'm going to spend some time masking this. I did do this last stream, but I was trying to jam it into the end. And it was feeling like I was just kind of like rushing through it. And I didn't really like how that was feeling. Uh, it wasn't very, it wasn't very educational. So I figured we'd do it for reals. I'm going to duplicate this. We're going to be end up duplicating this object many, many times. There's no harm in duplicating stuff because there's not really, it's not really a downside. So I'm going back and forth. I'm saying, I'm, maybe I want to fill this. So I'll fill this with clay brush very quickly. I'm just kind of smooth this out. Use H polish. And yes, I'm removing the detail, but we'll end up getting more detail in this later. Apparently I didn't have my symmetry on for part of that. Clean this up. There we go. We'll start putting this in there. Now this is actually a good time. I don't have a hotkey and I don't have a button for what I want to do right now. So this is probably a good time for us to realize, I like the backpack example that was mentioned. Let's go ahead and toss this a new feature into our backpack. So the feature I want is under visibility, hide PT. This will show everything or hide everything that was not masked, right? You can see how valuable that would be to us. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. And I'm actually just gonna go into our sub palette. I'm gonna hit my T, enable customize. I'm gonna grab hide PT. Let's put a, let's go ahead and grab one of these Custom UIs, another one, put it here. Let's get hide PT, show PT, this is the inverse of that. Uh, grow is also to grow your selection, I think that'll be useful. Shrink is gonna be the exact same thing. Uh, and let's start with that. So then we'll turn off, enable customize, double tap. And now what I can do is open this up and hit hide PT. Now we have this piece. Now what I wanna do since I duplicated this, right? I have this one, meaning I have a backup here and I have a backup here, which has all my subdivisions. But I want to get this piece. I'm going to clean this up at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything else that's not this piece of the model. So I can either come into geometry and do all the stuff that we were kind of talking about, or I can use my new little backpack. And you know what? I'm going to see if I can name that backpack because I like that idea. Uh, let's double tap this. It's untitled here. Probably just hit enable customize. Backpack. Oh, my caps lock's on. Backpack. Great. Now we have our backpack. Cool. So I can come in here now and I can do our delete hidden. This is great. Now that means there's nothing there. Cool. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to start cleaning this piece up. Now I'm going to take the H polish brush and I'm basically going to try to get all this stuff to be as clean as possible. Something else we can do to do this is we can use our slice curves brush. So the slice curves is right here. What I do with this when you do this is it will start creating poly groups for you. Now the problem with the, a lot of the slice features is that in symmetry they don't 
actually function. You can see I do have symmetry on if I were to be sculpting, right? And that's functioning, but it's not actually doing it here. Now this seems like a problem, but it's not really a problem because we have spent a little bit of time getting things uh, set up. So I'll start it. And if you hold down Alt or tap, not hold down, sorry. While you're hitting this, if you tap Alt, you can adjust some of the curves. So I'm gonna spend a little time here just getting this to be a little bit better. Okay, you'll see that that's now created a poly group. And that's probably as much as we really need to go. We could go even further knowing that, I'll move this base piece is getting in the way. Just hide it. There is gonna be some other little details in here that maybe I would wanna add now, but I, I also feel pretty comfortable just sculpting those in to what this piece will be. So I'm not gonna go crazy with this. I do wanna clean up the edges, however. So what I can do is I can go back into T and I can hit mirror and weld. Now you'll see mirror and weld actually went the wrong direction. So I can come in here and hit mirror and then mirror and weld, and that will give us the proper breakup of these poly groups. Uh, now you can do a bunch of different things. So there's a bunch of different smooths you can use or different ways to do this, but I like to go into my brush palette and I like to go into my smooth, and I believe it's under here, smooth parts, smooth groups. If I hit smooth groups, what this will do is if I start just smoothing the whole object, I'm just doing a really large smooth, it's keeping any poly group that I have, it's keeping that line. So you can see how, just how quickly I can clean this piece up. Now I do actually want to have straight down the middle of this, a poly group. So now I can smooth this and you'll see that I'll get another crease in the middle. I don't want this top one. So how do I fix that? Well, I can quickly come in here, right? I can group this into a single poly group. Now, here's maybe another place where we could add to our backpack. I typically could come in here and I could just say group visible, but you see the time that I'm already spending going into this, into this. So why don't we just add this to our backpack? So let's go back in here. We're going to hit our enable customize. We're going to open up our preferences. We're going to grab another one of these and we're going to get some, let's get an auto groups as a good starting point. Let's get our, um, Group visible, we know we like that one. Uh, group mast is pretty easy. That's already a, a control W is that hotkey. So we don't need to do anything special for that. We'll just start with that. All right, let's turn this off. Close our backpack. Let's go ahead and save that config just in case. And now what I can do is hit T and I can come in here and say group visible. Now I have three poly groups. And again, if I, if I shift while using that brush, you'll see that it will keep it. Uh, we can also use some creasing tools if we like. That's another way to do it. But right now, I'm just using smooth. Uh, Logan is asking from Twitch, how do you smooth the surface and keep the group edge sharp at the same time? Good question. That's kind of what we're going over right now. So when I went into my light box palette, I went into the brushes. Up in the brushes. I went into the smooth brushes and right here in the bottom left is something called smooth groups. Basically what this does is it makes it that whenever you smooth, it doesn't affect the crease of, or the poly group edge. Now, since we used the very nice, not this one, slice curve, it creates a perfect razor sharp poly group through the polygons. Now, if we were to do something different where let's say I just went like this, and I hit Control W, that will make its own mask. See how when I start smoothing this, it's gonna try, it's still doing it. It's actually smoothing the poly group itself, which is great. This is something we could probably use for the future. But uh, the slice curve gives us that automatically. So yes, it's a, not necessarily a custom brush, it's just a hidden brush within Lightbox. Now I actually really liked what we were doing there and it was looking similar-ish to this. So this might be a good place for us to create another poly group. So let's just mask this. Hit Control W, which will make a poly group like this. Now we know that, oh, it's just the same color. There we go. And we can probably say that's going to be roughly the right size and shape. Do I want this other one? I'm okay sculpting that in, I think. We'll try. We'll try sculpting it in. If it fails, we'll do it another way. 
All right, so what I can do now is I can keep this smooth. You see how I'm smoothing over this edge? It's smoothing out all these polygroups, but look how nicely it aligns that. Everything's looking great. Big fan of this so far, except I lost that middle crease. Okay, how can we fix this? Hmm. Well, we could probably just make another one. Try to get it right in the middle as best we can. And that will probably be okay. I think I actually see the other one right here. Yeah, that'll be just that'll be just fine. All right, so I wanted to try this mask by edge feature. This is actually something I saw Marco use. So we'll come in here and we'll go into our mask by feature border. And you'll see now it is masking the borders. It is masking the other areas. I'm wondering if that is because those other checkboxes are on. Let's try this real quick. Because these ones are also on, which is groups and crease. So let's open our backpack, enable customize. Let's get our groups and let's get our crease over here. Turn that off. Hide this. Clear the mask. Now I'm going to try it without groups and without crease on. Mask by feature. That's what I wanted. So you can see now it's just masked the outside. I could spend some time trying to do something with this. We'll try a couple different ways. One is I did get my polish slider here so I could just run a polish on it. And you see what that's doing. Starting to kind of make that a little cleaner. Not perfect, but it's getting there. And I'm going to spend some time just cleaning up the edges of this now. Actually doing the cleanup. We've smoothed it. We're getting it ready. But I'm going to spend some time, symmetry on, trying to align and clean up this piece. And this is actually going to be our base mesh after I Z-remesh it. Because right now, if we do a Z-remesh, see what happens. It gives us nicer geometry is cool. I realize I probably want to put my keep groups on. But you'll see what it's doing. It's going to give us this pretty nice little setup here. The most of what we want is still having some issues. And you see that there's this weird thing in the middle where something is happening. Maybe we'll try mirroring and mirroring and welding it. No, that's going to make it the same crease. We can add that crease in the middle, so I'm actually fine doing this. Let's try our Z remesh again while keeping groups. Looks like it's created a weird hole here. So now we're just going to spend some time cleaning this up. I'm going to do that before I Z remesh, though. Not too much time. Polish, polish, polish. Not worried about the edge right now. I know we can fix that pretty quickly as we showed. Use my H polish brush. I want to make sure that there's not too many issues like there are right here. Meaning there's a weird warp in the plane. You can kind of see how it goes back and forth. I'll change it to a slightly more shiny material where you can see that there's just a lot of pinches right here. There they are, right there. So I'll use H polish to clean this up. And smooth. There are two types of smooths. I used to call it the secret smooth, but I think it's become more well known. But basically, if you hold down shift to begin with, it has one type of a smooth. If you're holding down shift, and then you release shift while continuing to smooth, it will give you a different type of a function. So play around with that. I don't love this little peak that's happening right here. It's trying to fight some of this stuff. See, this is also acting a little bit weird down here. So I'm going to try to clean this up because it's going to give me a weird result. I'm pretty confident of that. And I'm wondering, is that another polygroup in here? Feels like it isn't there. 
Yeah. So you see from all the mel me mellowing, welding, and mirroring, there's some weird stuff going on in here. So I'm just going to start combining some stuff. I might want to make a quick uh, selection for my slice curve brush. That one seems to be one I'm using a lot. I'm going to just hand sculpt the crease in the middle. It's trying to give me some issues here. I think generally this is going to be just fine. What we've got, I always like to go back and forth to just make sure it's looking similar. You don't lose the shape too much. This is feeling good. All right, let's do that mask by borders. Invert that, and let's just polish that a couple times. And let's try our Z remeshing. I'm gonna go down about just to one, 1,000 polygons. So you can see it's a much simpler base mesh of what we had. I think with a little bit of time spent on just kind of pushing some of this around, we'll have a pretty good space. I'm also going to spend some time in these corners and these edges, actually creating what the shape's going to be. Since at this point we're creating the final geometry, Meaning we're not going to Dynamesh anymore after this. We're, you know, we might do a Z remesh once or twice to just get the geometry to be clean. But we're not going to spend loads of time on it. Use those polish brushes. Try to keep this as clean as possible. Some warping going on in there, which I'll try to fix. I know this seems like a lot of steps, but when we get to the end result, you'll see just how much cleaner this will really be than what was there already. And the amount of detail we'll be able to add will be significantly higher. So let's get all this kind of straightened out. I am spending extra time on the edges because I want them to be nice and clean. Because this, uh, very soon I'm going to use panel loops to add a thickness to this. So that looks nice and clean now. Great, let's do this one. Let me know if anybody in the chat has any questions. Happy to answer them. Otherwise, hope you all had a good holiday. I ate way too much food. Thanksgiving holiday. I know not everybody here celebrates Thanksgiving. Are there any, uh, any other international holidays around this time? Obviously before Christmas, after Halloween. I'm not sure. All right, that's probably going to be good. So you can see this is nice and cleaned up. So now we can go into our panel loops. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and just save. I'm going to say I haven't saved this project since we started today. Adding another one. What's my favorite holiday? Good question, AJ. Uh, my favorite holiday is probably Christmas, I would imagine. I think Christmas just because it's the most, it feels the most festive, you know? A lot of holidays don't really feel, feel festive. You know, like Thanksgiving's cool. I like Thanksgiving, like Fourth of July. These are obviously, you know, 
almost all American holidays, but I like those holidays. Um, Halloween is great. I like them all. All right, so I'm going to go into my panel loops. I'm just going to hit it by default so you can see what it does. So by default, this is what's happened. You'll see that it has smoothed the object. It's also kept the groups, but not only has it kept the groups, but it's also separated them, meaning that there's now going to be, we'll zoom in right here. This mini loop, see all these different little colors in here. This is, each one of these is a poly group, meaning I can come in here and I can isolate each color of these. I should be able to. See, you can hide these and select individual parts of these. This is cool if you want to do certain things, like if you want to add bevels or edges and stuff, which we'll certainly do. By default, it's a little much. And then also, by default, what it's doing by keeping these groups is it's actually... Let me switch to my normal smooth brush. We'll do smooth stronger. It's actually separated the mesh into separate pieces. Uh, this isn't ideal for what I'm doing right now, but it's also not bad, meaning like if I wanted to just come in here and start subdividing, you can see that the 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 shapes that I'm getting aren't bad shapes. This is definitely something we can use in our design process when we're making our characters. Just right now, it's not what I want for my character, meaning I don't want it to look like it's some several uh, different segmented chunks. So we're gonna undo a bunch of this before we panel looped it. So this is the before. <clears throat> AlexF1 from Twitch, hello, how you doing? Uh, how are you? I'm good, thank you for asking. How are you doing? Our classes. All right, this is going to be fine. So again, by default, the panel loops was five polish, five loops. So let's just play with this really quickly. Turn the polish down to zero and the loops down to one, and let's see what happens. Well, you can see that the loops is actually this number here. So when we zoom in, this is the loops that we're seeing in our panel loops section. And the polish is the shape. Is it adjusting the overall shape? So all it's really doing in this instance is adding a thickness and creating that separation. So I could still come in here and separate these. So we got progress, but not everything that we wanted yet. So let's try some more settings. Double, let's turn off double. And I think I actually probably need to pull over something here that's going to be needed. Edge loop. Probably want ignore groups. Let's try this ignore groups button really quickly. Aha, see? Now the ignore groups makes it so it's all one piece. I also turned off double. Double is what's actually adding the backside. So if I wanted to have undo, undo, double, so it's double-sided and it's ignoring groups, that's what I'll need. This will give me one nice singular piece of base mesh, right? So I have an inside and I have an outside that has all the poly groups on it. Those are some of the features that I want to have in my backpack. So let's come over here, go to our backpack, enable customize, let's grab the ignore groups button. We know it needs to go under or near our panel loops, so we'll toss it there. And we'll also grab our double setting. Oh, we already had the double setting. Ignore groups, what else do we need? Loops we have. Yep, thickness we have. Polish we have. I don't know what regroup loops and regroup panels is, but we can play with that later. Let's see if this works. All right, let's turn this off. Come back. Doing some hard surface today. Yes, we are. Going... Uh, forward with our project with our creator project and now we're going in to dial in some of these pieces so I do notice that this inner part should probably come in I'm wondering if I should bring that back hmm. right now I'm gonna have a thick shell I think I can do that. I, I want to have this inner piece here. After this, I think we'll do the head. This will be fine. We'll use double. All right, so we'll, we can hide this. We don't need this anymore for now. We have our double. We're going to 
ignore the groups and we're going to keep polish off and we're going to do three loops. Come in here and just type. The thickness has seemed fine. What the three loops are doing, again, is it gives us this so that we have three loops. The reason I want this is mostly for this feature right here I'll show you. So if we just hide some of these, hide, hide, hide. This one, this kind of thin edge. It's hard to see it, but I'm going to mask it all. Invert the mask. And what I'll be able to do is effectively pull out a small piece. Now, this is actually where five groups would have been better. But right now you'll see this is sort of the edge profile. So if we wanted to create some form of a leading edge or something that has sort of that shape that I was showing, we can do that using these group loops, panel loops. Sorry, wrong term. Wrong term for the wrong feature. Now we can also come in here with our Z model or brush and we can quickly add an edge loop into any of these areas. Since it is a singular loop that goes all the way around, if we want to add more detail, all we got to do is click in there, click in there, and we'll quickly be able to add detail, which is pretty cool. So for now, we're just going to go get this shape. Now I know this is a lot of setup and it's taken us almost 45 minutes to get to this point after making our backpack and just kind of showing off some of the tools. But I think we're in a pretty good place now to basically just start jamming out and making making the actual work. Something you can also do is just mask the whole inside. And I can also just pull it another way to do this. So there's a lot of ways that we can start adjusting these shapes. So I'm going to hide this. And let's just start doing it. So I'm going to pull this in. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to enhance that first. Enhance. Uh, backpack, that grow feature or that shrink feature. What you'll see this is doing, because I've selected a polygroup, grow, shrink. So I can go individual loop by loop. I know that I want to grab this whole edge that I'm going to make the inside of that. I'm going to mask all this, invert it. We'll turn off our poly group so it's a little easier to see it. And now I can grab and create effectively a singular polygonal shelf. So when I was saying earlier, like, hmm, I have this sort of shape here that I'm not totally sure about. This is where I want to adjust that. And before I do that, we're going to undo all this work because I realized the shape wasn't right before we continue. It's nothing really lost. We're just kind of been playing with settings. So I want to go back to this. And now I see this distance isn't really in the right spot. So pull it up. It's fine and just get it making sure that it's because when we were masking we weren't able to go all the way to the edge which meant that the shape was just slightly off from what it was so I'm going to try to capture that very very quickly this is something I should have done before I was Z remeshing or, or during Z remeshing but it's nice to kind of go through this really quickly because you can just see how easy it is Meaning, oh, if you mess up like I did, okay, you know, it takes five minutes to fix it, if that. Great. All right, let's do our panel loop again. I kind of want to have this crease in the middle where it's kind of like a collar guard. And 
And instead of doing this to every, like meaning like a going uh, piece by piece and finishing every piece, I think I'm just going to start blocking out all these base meshes because eventually it's just going to be fun sculpting again, meaning I'm just sculpting on the model and it's going to look cool when it's done. Uh, but I like to work, as I had said before, I like to work in the round. Uh, so I like to, I'm going to turn on my brush, go back to my smooth groups brush so that doesn't affect the other uh, poly groups as much. I don't really mind it having a little edge here. Just trying to get this all set up. I probably will crease these in a minute, or a couple of these. We get this kind of in the right zone. Cool. That's where that needs to go. this. I don't mind that going in a little bit more. Just trying to make sure it's clean. And this is going to become one of our first pieces. So I'm going to come in here and now I'm going to also do increasing. Now creasing I didn't really do on any of the backpack stuff so that's something we might need to add. It's in your geometry palette and it's also going to be under crease. So here's a bunch of different things with crease. Crease levels, if you, uh, you can hold down, I believe it's control or shift, or there used to be a button you could do that would tell you what all these mean. Crease will crease whatever you have hidden. So if I crease this, you'll see this little line appear, this kind of double-sided line. And now if I start subdividing, you'll see what it does. It basically creates that line there so that it's automatically preserving that. The tolerance will automatically do it. There's all these other ways that you can kind of crease things. Um, but the easiest way for me is to use the existing polygroups. So I want to basically show one and then I can say crease. The crease level here is going to be how long it holds the crease. So if I have it at one and I hit crease, right and now I hit divide, notice that after the first level, it began to smooth. Whereas if I undo this, undo the to the point where I hadn't creased and I say crease three and I hit crease crease subdivision one two three four now it starts to add that smoothness to it so depending on how soft you want your edges to be or how hard you want your edges to be creasing can be really really valuable for you and you have a little bit of control in how they're being used here so I'm going to undo that and I'm going to do crease level two is fine I'm going to crease this. It's going to do the whole edge of everything I'm looking at, so I'm going to crease this as well. And I think I'm just going to do a general down the middle. We'll use that grow feature. Crease. So now I've creased the middle as well. Looks like I was having some issues in the middle with that. See, this is where you want to be kind of careful. So before I do that crease, I think it's because I have my perspective on. Hide that. And that's gonna crease everything in the center. I don't actually know if I want this piece hidden or creased though. So let's just do that. So now there's not a crease here in the middle, but there is one here. Now when I come in here and I hit subdivide, you see that it'll have some nice creases on these areas without me having to sculpt them. This is a really good starting point for us. At this point, I can always come in and start sculpting just in any other way you normally would. I don't want to adjust the shapes too, too much. I think I want to go into our brush settings. Samples. I 
there's polygroups in one of these that I probably will find at some point. Topology, color, back face, directional, mask by polygroups. So let's find our backpack. Mask by polygroups. Oh, turn this on. Uh, where's our polygroups one? We'll do this one. What this should do, so I'm holding down shift or anything really. If let's use, I'll use my clay brush. I'll turn on mask by polygroups. I turn this up. Now I can only sculpt on the individual polygroup that I'm working on. So if I really just want to focus very slightly on something, it is a global setting. So I can start adding a little bit of something to some of these if I wanted to. I do want to also take this one and group that that way. From smoothing, turn that polygroups off. You kind of see what I'm getting at, but I want to have a harsh crease here in the middle. We can also just sculpt this stuff inside too, which is kind of cool. So basically what we're doing at this point is we're setting up our polygroups, we're setting up our mesh so that it's easier to sculpt on uh, and is just generally a little simpler to use. How the question from YouTube from AJ, how does ZBrush manage to handle so much geometry better than other 3D softwares? Really good question. Uh, the easiest answer is that ZBrush is a 2.5D program. It sounds weird. Uh, it's not a, meaning it's not a full 3D program. It is, it's using 3D, you know, information. Uh, but it, it uses the idea of the canvas to limit the amount of things that it's showing you. Ooh, this is a problem. We'll keep it. I'm not going to spend the time on stream to fix this right now, but that is something I should have caught. Meaning I'm not going to like undo everything and recrease. I'll just sculpt it correctly. Uh, the, what I'm talking about with a 2.5D program. Uh, if you zoom out, not zoom out on the model, that's what this is, zoom out, but if you zoom out on ZBrush, you'll see that there is this kind of window, right? And you, you basically manipulate everything inside of this window. Uh, this is part of how ZBrush has, is so powerful and can handle so many polygons is that it doesn't calculate anything on outside of the window, right? So if it's over here, it's not seeing that the, it knows the polygons exist, but it doesn't calculate them. It also doesn't calculate anything as soon as you've dropped it, meaning I've dropped it right now and I'm not affecting it. It's not, it's picking it up and then it's dropping it. So every time I'm picking it up to move it, it's calculating all the polygons because I might see them if I spin it around really fast, right? But as soon as I drop it, meaning I've let go of my pen, it is now dropped onto the canvas and you are working on a 2D image which has 3D information in it. So it's a 2.5D program. And that is how ZBrush is, is so powerful and is so good at handling that many polygons. That's part of the reason. Obviously, there's, obviously uh, people at Pixelogic are also just wizards. So that could be it as well. I'm going to bank on wizards. Yeah, it's actually one of the original features uh, within ZBrush because uh, it was kind of originally a painting program. Meaning, uh, you, if you come in here and you look at some of their things like Simple Brush, right? This is a, a version. There's a whole ton of these down here. Eraser brush, smudge brush. Like now, I'm effectively drawing. It sees that there's information here. You can see it looks like I'm basically drawing on this model, but I'm not because I've dropped it onto the canvas and I'm using some of these other tools. The smudge brush, uh, I haven't used many of these to be honest with you. The deco brush, I'm adding paint information to it. Um, 
pump brush. Looks like kind of like the clay brush. But note that as soon as I switch to this, I have to draw my image back onto the canvas. Some people have, have this and they think it's a bug, that they've lost their model. The reality is all you have to do is hit T and go into edit mode, which means we're now editing. And you'll notice that all that little fun information I drew right here didn't actually affect the model, right? It's because it was dropped onto the canvas and you were editing the canvas. So I've hit control N, I will clear my canvas. And now I have this back. So cool features, ZBrush is, like I said, created by wizards. It's also part of what I think allows them to do so many cool and interesting other features. Kind of like this little double edge that we're getting off of this. So I know I said I wasn't going to spend too much time on it, and I won't before we move on. But effectively, we have a first piece. Hooray! The first piece is away. I'm going to turn this up slightly, and I'm going to switch to, like, synth wave. No, we'll do lo-fi. Let me know if I turn it up too loud. I think that one playlist is just loud as it is. I just can barely hear the music. All right. But like I was saying, we effectively now have our first piece. We can obviously spend more time on this, and we will. And eventually, this is only 90,000 polygons. So I'm going to add some more subdivision levels, or I've already done that. So I've got up to 1.4 million polygons. And what that means is I can kind of come in here now if I want to create lines and shapes, interesting details, add some alpha work. You can see this is beautiful alpha work that I'm working on right now, right? Right. We can do this all very, very quickly, and it will have the fidelity of what we want and the shape that we want and the place that we want on the model, and that's really cool. Right. So I can come in here and save, and I will. And we'll show the rest of the model. So now we have a piece, a piece of mini to make, and this is the piece that we're actually sculpting on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide pretty much everything except for the piece that I just made. And now I'm just going to destroy this. So I know that this piece that I just sculpted is now here. Right, I can come in here if I want, I can go into low res, have a low res geometry and pull it around to help fit the shape, to help fit the design if needed. But I'm actually going to come back into this one. This is not the one with subdivision levels. Right, This one down here has subdivision levels, it also has detail on it. So this, what I'm using, is kind of as like a temporary piece to make sure that I know what I'm getting and to know what the final model is going to look like. So I accidentally pulled something out of the head there. So we'll just destroy it. Might need to add in some stuff later, but that's okay. As of right now, we have this one really nice piece to start from. And the whole goal of what we're going to be doing is to basically take the big model that we did here, finding pieces where we can do exactly what we just did. That was one of the more complicated pieces. And then we're going to duplicate them, rip them apart, separate them, and eventually get to the point where we have all, the whole model is made up of these many, many types of pieces. I do want to kind of pull this really quickly. grow that, doesn't it? Well, we know how to do that. Grow, 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 shrink, shrink, shrink. Now that I'm seeing it in context,
Just kind of pulling it in. I'll unmask the whole thing. And we'll even just kind of pull this in so that it feels more cohesive. So you can kind of see why I didn't want to just gloss over this on a pre-recorded five minute video, uh, because it's kind of in depth. Like what you're actually looking for is pretty in depth and uh, there's a lot of room to, to adjust stuff and to keep working, but we've got our good first piece. All right, let's keep going. Uh, let's start on the next piece. Let's do the head or let's try. The head's probably gonna be pretty complicated. So I'm gonna try to break it up into a couple pieces, I think. Actually, we'll do this outer piece. So I was saying, I basically destroy this piece. We don't need to worry about that anymore. I can always keep it in here, and I probably will, as some form of a background piece of sculpt, you know, a shed, an inner shell or something like that, to have it. You can see I'm getting nitpicky. Not what I want to do, but it happens. All right, let's get this piece up here. So we're gonna do this top little section. Now let's go ahead and mask it. Do we want it to be one piece or two pieces? One piece. So let's fill it. And even add sort of like a, an edge to this. Meaning I know that I don't actually need this piece to look like this right now. It's going to change. It's going to get better, but it's not going to be exactly the same. And that's okay. So all I need to do is set up the geometry right now to a place where it's kind of a staging ground. Like I want to get a clean mask off of this. So all these little details that I've hinted at here, they can go away. All these little surface undulations can go away. There's also a point where sometimes you have to adjust your design very slightly, but like I know, for example, what I'm working on right now has a little bit of a weird plane. It's going to be a little odd. So let's try it. We've messed all that. Let's go back to a different matte cap. It's a little easier to see. I'll show you why I'm going inside of this just slightly. And I'm actually, you know what? I'm going to get the inside of this because I did struggle to get that on this one. So let's just try it. Sometimes you get it right the first time, sometimes you don't. Right, control W, what that does is it automatically makes that a polygroup. So we have this now. Now, as you can see, the inside of this is kind of messed up. But we can come in here and I'm going to grow this. I'm looking for the inside here. And I'm going to use, you can see I already have the polygroup there, so I don't actually need to keep all of this. I'm going to use our slice curve though. To create one really sharp polygroup. And then I can mirror and weld it. Partially hidden. Ah, of course. Well, let's just delete the rest of it then. Great. Mirror and weld. That's not the side I wanted. Undo, mirror, mirror, and weld. Now we'll have this very nice group here. Flip this. Okay, let's just go ahead and do this all this way. This might be 
a little faster anyways. Let's see if I'm doing that on this side. all these little pieces I think I don't really need this one If you use auto groups, it'll separate any mesh that's not the same, so I can hide this pretty easily. So now we've got a pretty good chunk here. You can see how clean this edge is down here. This one could be cleaned up quite a bit, but it wasn't close enough to the edge, so I don't really want to mess with it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just spend a little time H polishing this. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to get this poly group set up. Perfect. Let's get that slice curve. Why is slice curve? There we go. Because I started inside. There we go. That's the biggest one I want, so we'll mirror and weld that this I'm gonna come and flip this don't know what all this junk is oh, that's stuff I wanted to delete let's delete that delete 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 great delete hidden group visible that gives us this top one you can also just hit Control w that'll group the whole one now we have this whole piece that we still need to spend a little bit of time polishing but now we also have our polish or smooth by groups you recently watched the stream with marco ploof and chaos masons it's so good marco's incredible and what i'm using right now is realistically it's it's a lot of the stuff i've learned from marco and even re-watching that stream myself uh, the, he's he and his his team and company are fantastic. They do a really excellent work. Also, just really friendly. I love how much they share. They produce insane amounts of work, just personal work alone, much less professional work. And so let's do that. Mask by feature. Invert that. We'll polish this whole thing. Turn our Z remesh down to one. We'll try doing this. So this is our thing. We do want to keep those groups though, so let's keep those groups. Great. How's this looking? Not terrible. So let's clean this edge up. Symmetry's on. Great. Yeah, their stuff is incredible. They have, they have a very uh, great sense of shape design and, and I mean a lot of other things. They're they're fantastic artists, but um, yeah, they're they're really fantastic. So I do know I want to add another crease and, and kind of something in the middle here. I'll probably make that part of what I'm going to do in a second. I 
Rush Cahoots from Twitch is asking to link it to the video. It's on Noman's YouTube channel. It's, I believe it's called Exploring Character Modeling with Chaos Masons. Chaos spelled K E O S. It'll be within the past year. And it has a thumbnail of one of the four horsemen riding a zombie horse. So check that out. This is looking pretty good. I think I could probably get a little more cleaner in some of these edges here. Like you see how this is wobbling over here. When I add the thickness, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but if I came in right now and just quickly added this, well, that one polished it, but which isn't terrible, but uh, it makes it a little harder to pull these objects in a direction because then you create warps. Thank you very much, Alex. Appreciate that. Um, it just makes it a little harder. So I'm trying to get this a little... Dialed in. I'm, I might leave the polish on this time. So I'm going to do the panel leaves, leave polish on at five. I'm going to ignore the groups, however. Let's do five loops. Let's just do this with five loops, but just ignoring it. So you'll see what it's done. Now it does polish those edges, which can be good and it can be a problem, right? For me right now, this is something that I could either say like, this is part of the design language, and maybe this is something I wanna just roll with and say, you know, it's gonna make my life a lot easier if I don't have to re-sculpt all these edges all the time, which is true. I just don't want it to break apart the model every single time. And the thing I didn't do before I did that was talk, I said I was gonna add that middle plane and I didn't. So let's add it in here. So let's hide this. Come in here. We'll grow this one time. Polygroup this into two polygroups. So we'll do this one, W. And then I guess I'll have to show that all again. Do it again. Nope. And now if I want to do this, when I smooth, you'll see I'll have like a little separation there. That's cool. Happy to keep that. We'll try that poly groups thing. Sorry, the panel loops thing one more time. It polished it. I'm fine with it, but I am going to play with the polish number. Let's just put it at four, two. Okay. Polish one. Not too bad, a little bit better. Keeping the shape more. Whereas if you see, if I take this to zero, it just doesn't do anything, which is good, but there is some of these little surface warps that I could either spend time fixing, or I can see what ZBrush will do for me. As it stands right now, I'm kind of happy with what it's actually doing. Let's try something in here. Let's try something we don't normally do. Polygroup, edge loop, edge loop. Within these, you can always create new edge loops. Meaning I could take this. The reason you might want to do something like this is, I'll show you very quickly, but come in here. I'm just going to take this. Come on. There we go. Now I have an additional edge loop inside. I can quickly polygroup these, mask them, invert the mask. And then with that, I can actually create an inset or something like an inset. So this is just more or less straight up poly modeling techniques to create shapes. But it's nice and effective. Hello, what am I making? We're working on a character called the creator. I'll show you them in a second. Right now we're working on a small piece of hard surface sculpting I think my goal today is to get as much of this to this point as possible we have about 40 more minutes in the stream you can kind of see how it picks up 
once you get your workflow down, once you kind of get into the zone of it, for me, to be honest, when I get off stream and I don't have to talk while I'm doing it, it'll be a little easier. But uh, that's all kind of part of the process, right? So I'm lining these pieces up. So let's start there. So that means that we have basically, we'll hide the overall character. We have this piece here which we can add some subdivision levels to. And I'm gonna do some more details to all this. But we have this piece and we have this piece. And effectively we have started from a larger character like this, which I need to duplicate. Duplicate, I'm gonna move it to the top of my list here, one of the duplicates, delete my lower subdivision levels. But what I'm starting with is this big piece and this whole diorama and scene of a character creating and holding this robotic character, holding these other characters here. And now we're breaking this big subtool up, this one big subtool, which is 10 million polygons. And we're gonna make it into lots of smaller ones. So this piece and this piece is what we've started with here. So now we can start bringing them together if we wanted to, which I will later, you know, I'll start getting more specific with some of these shapes. See how they're not really aligned. So I might say, okay, let's see if we can make this feel a little bit better. Let's spin this. Or let's try to get this to feel just slightly more in line with this. It's gonna take some finessing that I'm not sure I wanna do on stream right now. groups there but it's gonna be kind of hard to not destroy them so I'm gonna be very 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 careful Can I see what I'm attempting to do to align this but this is stuff I'll be doing a lot of this I'll spend off stream Rush Cahoots from Twitch is asking, Josh, when you're in concept mode, do you use Dynamesh or do you go up and down in subdiv levels? Uh, I do both. I prefer to have subdiv levels just because I think it's a lot easier, for me at least, to go up and down and to adjust shapes. I also like to work up in detail, meaning I'll start at my lowest subdivision level and then I will work upwards. Um, slowly through subdivision levels and I only go up a subdivision level if I need to meaning if I feel like there's a reason to add detail uh, if I need to add more detail I think typically you can add my opinion is that you can add more detail than you need to too quick sometimes and so I find that I can get myself into trouble if I don't if I don't focus on the the detail first or, or on the f base forms first I'll get myself into trouble so I work that though the typical way I would do it is I would probably do what I did here which is you'll see this is a this was a dynamesh uh, sphere I think it was a sphere I pulled it and tweaked it and started sculpting in it but eventually I did uh, stopped that and you can see this is where I then added subdivision levels. Instead of dynameshing at higher and higher levels, I thought it would be better for me to stop at a lower subdivision level, roughly here, and then add actual subdivision levels. So I do a little bit of both. You have a follow-up question, which is, in what phase would you consider this part of the process? I think we're kind of out of pure concept mode, meaning, uh, meaning that we're kind of searching for the shape and trying to figure out what the character is going to be, and that we've kind of transitioned into um, not finishing, but polishing or refining. So now I know that this is 
generally what the shape of the character is going to be but the details and the specificity that we want to have is going to take a little bit of time and so i'm going to come in here and do each individual plate and part and piece of this character um, just to to make it more detailed more more uh, than other parts hopefully that answers your question though. all right let's do another piece all right let's save again So I know I have some big pieces here, and I might not do each and every one of these as separate subtools. Some might be big chunks that I'm going to sculpt in a line. You know, we'll figure it out, but I think it'll probably be several, lots of subtools. Let's hide this piece. I don't need that. I did this earlier, but then I accidentally deleted it. It happens. So that is our clean geometry in here. And you can just kind of see how much cleaner those shapes are. Just a lot easier to work with once those are done. All right, let's work on this head. I'm going to go ahead and just grab the whole head and separate it as its own subtool. So right now there's not any polygroups on this. If I hit Control W, that will separate it. You see how that changed the color? Looks like I did get a little bit of other stuff around it. Just trying to unmask that. That'll do. I'm just gonna do a split, polygroup, split, hidden. Oop, that's not what I wanted because that's the bottom piece, which is this piece. I don't need this. Delete that entirely. Group split. Not undoable. Be careful with that. Okay. That can sit up top. Great. This is what we're kind of working on now. And we're going to make this piece now a more finished piece. First, it needs a little bit more detail, I think, in here. So I'm just going to add some subdivision levels and just kind of smooth it. The reason I'm doing this is so I know more clearly what the planes are going to be. X to G from Twitch is saying, hey, dude, can you explain in a list form what's your workflow for? Workflow from start to finish in a list form. Uh, sure, let's do a list. Uh, list form. Number one is going to be reference. Number two is going to be sketch slash ID8. Uh, this usually means I'll be doing something in quick 2D sketch. Then we do sculpt sketch. This meaning it's usually going to be like a 3D sketch in ZBrush. At this point, we're really looking for looking for forms. Uh, then we're going to do refinement and iterate, and then like. Composing, composition, rendering, probably in here, somewhere in here. If we're doing a full 3D thing, we might do some texturing. And that's probably it. I don't know how this will go into the chat, but we'll give it a shot. Iterative. Uh, iterative is probably the most key thing like you just said yeah it's just keep polishing keep going back to what you were working on slowly making it better and better and better because eventually it'll it will get better you know i think that people look at um work that they see online and it's really refined and it looks really great and it's absolutely stunning and beautiful but uh they don't know how the how the artist or the person gets kind of to that point and that's totally normal. You know, I look at some people's work and I don't know how they got to that point either. So a lot of it is pushing through the the difficult parts of, 
of being an artist and sometimes it's you don't always know what the outcome is but you need to kind of have trust or whatever other words you want to use for that faith trust confidence experience sometimes are all the same thing you want to have those to know that it's going to go get better you know the first sketch you do on anything usually sucks usually it's pretty bad <laughs> Right. It, uh, I think I showed it in my first one. You know, my sketch for uh, this character. I'll even just open it really quickly. Uh, my sketch for this character. Uh, it's going to load up Photoshop in a second. But my sketch for this character was basically uh, something that was pretty simple, uh, pretty rough. You know, to be honest, uh, it was just something that needed to be. Uh, worked on so this is my sketch here so you see i had this reference of a bonsai tree i liked the gesture of this and i thought it could be interesting if the character was kind of being held by this and so i sketched out a potential front view but i've been using the side view as more of it where there's a character here being held by this other character and that's kind of uh just how it looks right uh, and so after that, uh, I'll very quickly just show you some previous file iterations because I think it's interesting. Uh, this is version 2. So this appears when we had worked on this, the sculpt for just about an hour. And you'll see this is the sketch. So going off of that bonsai tree sketch, um, it's kind of what you see here. Right? It's, it's basically uh, the same thing where it's the character being held in the space and you can see i was going from the profile view and attempting to lock down what the design was going to be and uh, just kind of going through all of that right uh, and then now if we jump even to the most recent one which has some pieces hidden i'll hide them all you can see even though there's more detail and there's going to continue to be more detail uh, the idea is kind of the same it's just slowly pushing it forward and not in a weird way just not being happy with what this was i know it could be better i'm going to push the shapes i'm going to you know evaluate the shapes i'm going to push the pose and the posture and and just keep pushing it because i think that's what uh, the iterative process for me is is a huge part of my creative process and it's kind of how i get get to more resolved pieces so now what we're doing is we're going to take this head, for example, and we're going to break this up into a couple subtools. So let's do it. Let's mask this piece off here. There'll probably be something, some sort of a crease there. I don't entirely know what it will be. Again, it's always, it's kind of like if you ever watched uh, comic artists or traditional artists who use pencil. Often what they would do is they would use pencil and then they would a blue pencil right they'd use a blue pencil and then they'd go over it and maybe they do ink and then after they do their ink they do their color right where they do some just they do a black and white ink and then they'd add some values to it they'd add some darks and some grays and stuff like that that's no different than this process obviously we're using different tools but the idea is you're slowly building up the object you're slowly slowly building up the thing that you actually want to make uh, and it's, it doesn't start at one point and end at one point. It slowly turns into that thing over time. So like I know that I want this to be a plane. And I'm going to try to make this a couple different pieces. I'm seeing some issues already with how this will probably work. I'm going to smooth some of this out because I do think I want to capture actually some of the back of this. Uh, I used to do, and I still do some, hard, uh, hard poly, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> hard surface poly modeling. So meaning sculpting, or not sculpting, but modeling something straight up in a, in a Maya or equivalent package to do this type of work. Uh, and I still enjoy that. And I think that you can get a very high quality result. And with that result, you can also get a very, uh, very specific level of precision when you work like that. 
And whenever I work like that, and what I would often tell people when working like that, you know, because I would see people working on polygon, poly models, and you know, doing it box modeling or, or edge flow modeling or whatever, whatever way you want to call it, I would see people working on that, and they would ask me questions about how I got to where I was, what I was working on, and um, often they would find themselves getting stuck on a piece or a thing of the model, and. Uh, finding a pinch or they sit they sit forever and try to solve one pinch in a model and the problem with that is that especially early on you're the amount of times that you're going to go through and and touch or manipulate that vertice that you're working on or that one element that you're working on it's probably going to be hundreds of times thousands of times in reality before you're done with the character and so not getting hung up on where you are in the moment is incredibly important to it, to the process. Because, yes, you can probably spend, you know, two to five extra minutes each time and make every part of your process better or make it look slightly better. Uh, you can, no doubt about that. But in, in doing so, by making every phase of your iterative process perfect and ensuring that it's perfect along the way it slows you down so much because it doesn't need to be perfect in the sketch phase it doesn't need to be perfect as you iterate through the process it only needs to be perfect at the end that's the only time anybody's going to care if it's perfect they don't care if if the sketch you know if this file here is perfect you know, if I make sure all these lines work and that it's not faceted and that it's smoothed all the, the whole way, people don't care about that. They care about the final, final, final version that they're going to see is and how that looks. And so kind of the way that I've been able to speed up in my career and to work faster and, and put less stress on myself also has been kind of exactly that. To say this part doesn't really matter right now. I'm going to come back to it later. And it'll be better later. I'll finish it then. I know I have confidence that I can finish it then. So I don't know if that really answers any of your question or if it was anything, even anything you were hoping to hear, but it's something I found that's been helpful for me. How do you build something nobody has ever seen before? Uh, AJ is asking from YouTube, uh, meaning how do you inspire creativity in yourself? Well, I think inspiring creativity in yourself is all about f finding out what makes you feel inspired. Uh, I, that's a very personal question, not meaning like I'm not going to answer it, but I mean like it's up to you. What inspires you? What inspires me doesn't necessarily inspire you, AJ. It inspires somebody else or, it, you know, so for me, sometimes it's watching a movie. Sometimes it's uh, not watching a movie. Sometimes it's reading a book. Sometimes it's playing a game. Sometimes it's doing nothing on the computer at all. Sometimes it's hanging out, you know, with my family. Sometimes it's doing something different and finding bits of inspiration from all of those moments and just kind of gathering them into to something that's that's uh, it's inspiring for you. You know, I find that for me, being on social media and looking at at uh, other people's artwork can be either incredibly inspiring or very depressing. And I avoid it sometimes just because I would rather not feel like I need to compare myself to other people. Imposter syndrome is a real thing, right? Just isolating all these pieces in case anybody's wondering what I'm actually doing while I'm talking. So we'll get this last bit here and then we'll we'll move on. So for me I'm a big I like board games. I like role play games. So I'll spend a lot of time playing those or you know, kind of escaping into that world. I'm gonna delete this piece. So we're gonna delete hidden here. Open up our backpack. It says it has subdivision levels. Delete those. 
delete and we should still have the whole character here or rest of the character so you can see what we're actually currently working on now these are all separate sub tools or not sub tools they're separate poly groups so I could come in here and polish them up and make them individual pieces I might I'm trying to decide how much of this I want to make a singular sculpt and how much I want to make separate I think I'm gonna make this one piece and I think I'm gonna make this one piece and probably this one piece and yeah, I might bring this part back let's get this can I auto groups this yeah I'm just gonna delete that one little chunk there all right so we'll hide this split hidden split hidden so what I've effectively done now is I have a poly group for a new subtool for this, this, and this. So let's start on the top one. This one's going to be pretty straightforward. We'll probably just use our slice curve or our mask by edges. Invert that. It's going to be pretty jagged here, so I don't know if the poly group's really going to, or the polish is going to go as much as we want. I might need to soften that up before we do some polish. If it doesn't work, it's too jagged. We'll just use this. So now we get a nice edge. There's some weird forms in this shape, but that's okay. I'll spend a minute just kind of polishing up those really quickly. Winnie from YouTube is asking, Hey Josh, do you have any tips for using ZRemush tool in ZBrush? I often have a hard time trying to get a nice flowing topology result from it. Thanks a lot. Um, the biggest thing you can use is use the ZBrush guide curves. The guide curves are pretty solid. Uh, often they'll give you most of what you want. Uh, if you go in here, it is the ZBrush Remesher Guide Curve, and that will do kind of what I'm saying. So I'd recommend checking those out. Uh, the other real, I guess, options that you have is... Um, Just adjusting the polygon um, amount that you're hoping to get, going lower, going higher. And making sure sometimes you have to, you kind of have to force Z Remesh to give you something good. And that means you sometimes you just need to sculpt a little bit to do that. So it's like, you know, for example, we'll see if it does it here. I'll show you in a second, but uh, I'm going to quickly like I'll put one that kind of goes like this hide that I'm going to put one that goes here first I'm going to do this one maybe we'll put one that goes like this we'll turn off our perspective and we'll try to do one down the middle so I'm kind of forcing this to, to do certain shapes for me I don't love what it's got here actually this might need to be redone it's like I know I want it to go thing going on here I 
want that to be part of this orange. Just make sure it's all mirrored and welded. That feels a little bit better. I'm going to smooth some of this out. I still have my smooth by groups on. So you'll see it's kind of helping me. And I'll, I'll actually just kind of enhance the sculpt itself. to fit it now. We'll give it a little mohawk vibe in the middle. Meaning I can see the polygroups appearing. Which is going to be great for me. Because I know a bit more of what I'm going to be getting now. And then I'm going to come in here, I'm going to use Z Remesh. I'm going to turn the, this down to 1. I'm going to try to keep my groups. I'm going to hit Z Remesh. Shouldn't take very long. Hopefully this gets cleaned up, which it did. You see that it's given me mostly good geometry, all except for this blue, which is pretty garbage. So let's try it one more time. Let's make it a little higher. Let's try 2. Still pretty bad. So let's try using those curves. So let's go in here, Z Remesh Guide. You basically just draw roughly the shape you want, and then let's try again. Nope. It is not liking that. I'm not entirely sure why. It looks like it's trying to connect this end to this end. So let's just mask this and give it a little extra room. Maybe with the extra room, it will give us a better geometry. You see now it did. I think what was happening here, just uh, Winnie about your question. Sometimes Z Remesh is trying to give you the best result, but it doesn't entirely know what you want. So you kind of have to take it, and tweak it, and pull it, and adjust it so that it's just going to have a slightly better angle or result. And yet, at the end of the day, it is an algorithm. So you're having to tweak your shape to fit what the algorithm does and what I was doing like if I just undo this real quick I don't think it'll show any of them yeah well you can see what it was trying to do is it was trying to do a loop that was all the way around you can even see what it's doing here with that so I had to try to like figure out why it was doing that and once I realized what it was doing or why I thought it was doing that then I can kind of correct it and say, okay, I'll help you out, Z Remesh. I'm going to tuck this back in. And this is probably, I'm not going to spend too much more time on these pieces. Uh, I do want to get through a couple more of these on stream. So this is going to be a piece that I'll probably spend a lot more time on, but we'll go through all these as well. So we'll do this one too. This one needs to be cleaned up quite a bit. This is also where more designy stuff gets in. So, you know, what are these shapes? Where's, where is the stuff that's happening here, right? I like what we've got here, so I'm going to smooth out some of these polygroups. The guide tool for the Z Remesh is, is really great, especially when you're working on humanoid characters where you want to have you know, um, a certain type of something, right? You want to have a, you want to have a ring that goes around the eyes, for example, is a really good example, right? That's a perfect thing that you would want to do this with. I'm using this mirror and weld feature a lot. You'll see me using this quite a bit. Mm -hmm. 
AJ is saying it's it's really encouraging to hear even a little pro like me say you feel a little depressed sometimes looking at people's artwork. I mean, how can you not be though? <laughs> I mean, I think imposter syndrome is a real thing that people don't really talk about. Obviously, mental health is becoming a more common thing in the media, but like, and generally culturally, I I hope, but. I think artists by their nature are, are people who, you know, you look around at other people's work, partially to be inspired, probably it's what inspired you to be here, so it's kind of hard to like look at that and be like, hmm, I don't know, can I do that, can I not do that, it's like the one of the next logical questions that I think of, is a trap that people fall into, it's a dangerous trap headspace to get into though it's nice to be critical of your work and you know, to, to force yourself to get better it's not nice to do that when it becomes dangerous so I'm going to go to a, the trim hole brush it's not actually in here so I need to go into brush I think it's under trim trim hole I'm going to smooth this out I'm just going to fill this whole thing. I know that I can later carve in a perfect circle. So rather than trying to get a perfect piece of geometry here, that will have, you know, the perfectly shaped edge loops that I can perfectly inset. Uh, there's obviously some ways I can do that and we'll play around with them. But for now, I just want to make this a good piece of geo and using the trim hole, you can actually do that pretty easily moving forward. So right now, I mostly just want to make this a flat plane. The depth is a little intense though. Another thing I could do is I could just use a clip brush. So I can come in here. Uh, clip curve is one of my favorites. Which will make it very, very, very planar. That shape will need to be adjusted. There are other ones, meaning I could do clip circle, uh, clip circle center, like this kind of stuff to make a perfect shape. It's also, also something I can play with. Which is fine, I don't mind that. But this is all going to be sculpted on later, so this is probably more of a detail that I don't need to focus on. But we can see if Z Remesh can handle it. So let's come in here, let's do our mirror and well, just in case there's anything weird going on. I see that this has its own poly group. So we'll do our auto groups. And then we will combine this. With that. Cool. I'm not so sure about this little part here, but we'll see. Do this one. Really enjoying using the slice curve brush and in combination with the smooth polygroups brush because then it can actually smooth out some of that stuff for me. Which is kind of cool. Kind of see what I'm getting at here. So whenever it's working it's pretty cool all right let's um mirror and weld it again and then let's try our z remesh keep our groups 1k
Not terrible. Some of this weirdness in here I was worried about. But you can see how nicely it is uh, created these polygroups that follow these lines. And again, if I just use a really, this is going to destroy it, but if I use a really large mesh you can or brush, you can see how these polygroups can be very quickly and very easily organized into nice shapes. Obviously, I can also come in here and subdivide and I can crease like we did on some of the previous ones, which we will. But for now, again, we're just getting some of this set up as our final meshes. So the goal for next week, which was the goal for this week, is to finish this model for me. So the goal for next week is to finish the model for this. And so I'll record anything I don't do on stream. And so you have a chance to see it. And I'll do a quick narrated video about what we how I got to the end result, which I'll show you next week. And next week we'll be diving into Quixel uh, Mixer and we'll be basically texturing this character. At least that's the plan. Doing some quick texturing, getting it all set up. I'm not so sure about this eye part here. see what the final model looks like later but you can see how the steps to get there are happening so I'll end up panel looping all this stuff I'll end up adding details to all this stuff I probably have about eight to ten hours of work on this character to do curve anymore I can use the selection nice thing about creating a quick polygroup is I can quickly smooth with it there's something weird here I'm not in love with but we'll just make it part of the design I'm just going to go through and kind of dial this in. I'm still using normal sculpting tools as well to keep forms where I want them. But that piece is done, or it's set up to be done. Do this one very quickly. It kind of already has the big pieces I want here. So what happens if we just straight up Z remesh this, keep those groups? Not too bad. This is realistically going to be stuff that's kind of like a under part of the chin and part of the behind the neck stuff. So I don't really need this part here to be amazing. Something you can also do is you can also double or triple or quadruple or as many times as you want to, you can Z remesh. So meaning I can get that line nice and cleaned up. I can then come back in here and do it again. And that'll clean that up even further. It does lose some of the detail that was there. But if you're coming in here to clean up a mesh that you're going to adjust and you're going to sculpt, uh, zero meshing twice or three times can uh, get you there pretty quickly. So good tip. 
All right, everybody. We're actually going to be at the end of our stream here. So thank you, everybody who's been here, who's been hanging out with me. Really super appreciate it. Uh, it's been a fun one. Um, thank you very much for hanging out with me on Archetype. Uh, next week, we'll be here, same time, same place, from 10 to noon Pacific time on Tuesday. And we'll see this model finished. Uh, I am hoping to have a special guest by the end of the year. So whether it's this week or the following week, we'll see. Uh, but hopefully... Uh, we'll have a uh, somebody to come in and also talk design. It's not just me, and we'll have a fun time. So, all right, everybody, have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.